Luke chapter 2 verses 22 to 40. A light of revelation to the Gentiles, and glory for your people Israel. When the days were completed for their purification according to the law of Moses, Mary and Joseph took Jesus up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord, just as it is written in the law of the Lord, every male that opens the womb shall be consecrated to the Lord, and to offer the sacrifice of a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons, in accordance with the dictate in the law of the Lord. Now there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon, this man was righteous and devout, awaiting the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit was upon him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he should not see death before he had seen the Christ of the Lord. He came in the Spirit into the temple, and when the parents brought in the child Jesus to perform the custom of the law in regard to him, he took him into his arms and blessed God, saying, Now, Master, you may let your servant go in peace, according to your word, for my eyes have seen your salvation, which you prepared in the sight of all the peoples, a light for revelation to the Gentiles, and glory for your people Israel. The child's father and mother were amazed at what was said about him, and Simeon blessed them and said to Mary his mother, Behold, this child is destined for the fall and rise of many in Israel, and to be a sign that will be contradicted, and you yourself, a sword will pierce, so that the thoughts of many hearts may be revealed. There was also a prophetess, Anna, the daughter of Phanuel, of the tribe of Asher. She was advanced in years, having lived seven years with her husband after her marriage, and then as a widow until she was eighty-four. She never left the temple, but worshipped night and day with fasting and prayer. And coming forward at that very time, she gave thanks to God and spoke about the child to all who were awaiting the redemption of Jerusalem. When they had fulfilled all the prescriptions of the law of the Lord, they returned to Galilee, to their own town of Nazareth. The child grew and became strong, filled with wisdom, and the favor of God was upon him. Luke wrote his gospel for the benefit of the Gentiles, who would not know the details of Jewish tradition, thus Luke felt the need to carefully explain the traditions of the faith. Mary and Joseph were devout Jews and as such lived not only the principles of the faith, but also the traditions of the faith. One such tradition was to bring their firstborn, to the temple for dedication to the Lord. Part of Jewish tradition was that each boy would be circumcised and named on the eight day after his birth. The second reason for the temple visit was that Mary and Joseph brought Jesus to be redeemed. The firstborn was presented to God one month after birth. The ceremony included buying back or redeeming the child from God through an offering, in this case the sacrifice of two turtle doves or pigeons. The purpose of this offering was so that the parents would acknowledge that the child was given to them by and belonged to God. Turning to Leviticus 12 1-8 we read about the purification and sacrificial laws, in regard to the mother. A woman who gives birth to a male child is considered ceremonially unclean, that is excluded from temple worship, for seven days, and then must wait an additional 33 days for her ceremonial purification, and temple offering. The law of Moses given in Leviticus 12 7-8 tells about the terms of the purification offering. Forty days after the birth of Jesus, Mary and Joseph were to bring a lamb for a burnt offering and a dove or pigeon for a sin offering. Leviticus 12 verse 8, If, however, she cannot afford a lamb, she may take two turtle doves or two pigeons, the one for a holocaust and the other for a sin offering. The priest shall make atonement for her, and thus she will again be clean. However, because of her miraculous delivery, she was not really obliged to make the sin offering for purification. The Jews expected the Messiah to arrive shortly, but their expectation of the Savior was one who would ride into their lives on a white stallion and overthrow the yoke of Roman oppression. Simeon followed the urging of the Holy Spirit and entered the temple at exactly the right time. He then discovered the Messiah, not on a white stallion, not accompanied by a massive army but in the arms of a poor carpenter and his teenaged wife. The Messiah had arrived not as man had anticipated but as God wanted. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, says the Lord. Simeon and Anna had recognized the Lord who was both human and divine. As we move through our daily lives we are also challenged to recognize how the Lord and his ways are working in our lives. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 verse 23, May the God of peace make you perfect and holy and may your spirit, life, and body be kept blameless for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ.